Hi everyone, welcome to the video lecture on regression analysis. So for this video lecture, we're going to be talking about regression analysis and the commonly used terminology in regression analysis. So regression analysis is a statistical procedure um, that can be used to develop an equation showing how variables are related. When you only have one variable that you want to analyze against another variable. It's called a simple linear regression model. But when you want to analyze one variable against multiple variables, it's called a multiple linear regression. For a simple linear regression, the variable which we are trying to analyze currently is called, referred to as the y variable. And the variable that is being used to analyze the y variable is called the x variable. So the purpose of the regression model is to find an equation that can help explain the relationship or the changes in y when x changes. So um, in a lot of books, you would also see that the y variable is referred to as the dependent variable and the x variable is referred to as the independent variable because the y is dependent on the changes in x. Um, sometimes y is also called the response variable and x is called the predictor variable. So when we say a regression model, what we actually mean is that we want to find out this equation where y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x. So this is the equation for a simple linear regression model uh, where beta 0 refers to the y-intercept or the value of y when x has a value of 0. And beta 1 refers to as the slope coefficient uh, which essentially tells you how much of the y value will change uh, when you change x by one unit. So um, in, 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 a, in a simple linear regression model, what you're assuming is that when x changes by one unit, y changes by beta one units. So um, a lot of the times this model is also written as y is equal to beta zero plus beta 1 x plus an, a value that we refer to as either the error term or the residual. In this case, this version of the equation tells you that you're trying to predict the value of y with the help of a regression model. Now, Obviously, your prediction sometimes will not be 100% accurate. So when that happens, the error term is a non-zero value that um, is going to represent the changes in the y variable. Um, so the predicted value of y, which we are calculating using the regression equation is also denoted as y hat whereas the actual value of the y is just simply written as y itself. So when you find out the difference between the actual value of y from its predicted value it should be equal to the error term that we uh, had described earlier. So if I write down the earlier equation y is equals to beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus the error term. What I can say here is that because I'm using the regression equation to find the predicted value of y, I can replace this part of the equation with y hat, which refers to the predicted value of y. Hence, I have the relationship between the predicted value of y and the actual value of y as this equation where the difference is equal to the error term or what's also referred to as the residual. So in regression, a lot of emphasis is placed on the residual 
because if the residual is a really high number, that just means that your regression equation is not actually serving the purpose of, of a prediction very well because um, the w predicted y value is uh, very different from the actual y value. So the goal of regression is to minimize this residual uh, or this error term. Now um, that's the whole basis of a simple linear regression model. When we talk about a multiple linear regression model, we still have one y variable, but we can have multiple x variables. So beta zero remains the same. We just have additional terms in our regression equation for um, the slope coefficients for all the added x variables, and this can essentially go on and on and on. So um, I can have a regression model with 10 x variables, and each of the coefficients of the x variables, the beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, are going to refer to the slope coefficients or um, in other words what the betas mean here is that when you keep all the other variables constant and you change x1 by one unit y will change by beta one units or the same for x2 if you keep all the other variables uh, constant and just change x2 by one unit then the changes in y will be equal to beta 2. Um, this, the y-intercept uh, definition remains the same, which is if all the x values or all the x variables are 0, the value for y will be equal to beta 0. Now, let's talk about scatter plots. So, before we start with any regression analysis, it's first um, a good strategy to check if the relationship between y and x is indeed linear. And to check that, we generally plot a scatter plot where the y variable is on the y axis and the x variable is on the x axis. And we try to see how the scatter plot is shaped. Is there a linear trend or not? It can be an upward sloping linear trend or a downward sloping linear trend, or it could be um, sort of a, a flat line. Um, but the scatter plot helps us identify if the assumption of a linear relationship between the two variables is a valid one or not. So let's check that out with the help of an example. Um, I have some data over here that refers to a beachfront hotel um, uh, hotels and uh, their overall scores that are given by the customers are given in column b the comfort scores are given in column c the amenity scores are given in column d and the in-house dining scores are given in column e now if i want to check if the overall score is linearly related to the comfort score, I'm going to first create a scatter plot for this data so that um, I can identify if the relationship is going to be linear or not. To do that, I'm going to click on insert and select under charts a scatter plot. Once you've selected the scatter plot, what you can do is right click on the plot and select data. So in order to add data to your plot, you're going to click on add and put the series name. Now the series name is going to be the name of the y variable, so I'll point Excel to that. The x values are the ones that are given in column C because we're trying to identify if comfort can be used to find out about the changes in the overall score. So the y variables are the ones that are given in column B. Notice that I selected the data from row two because that's where the data starts. If I select row one, 
um, Excel uh, does not yet know that row 1 only includes um, column headers and not actual values. So it might um, give you an incorrect scatter plot. Okay, so when I press OK here, this is what the scatter plot looks like. And there's a nice function in Excel that you can use in order to quickly run a linear, simple linear regression model on the same plot here is if you press quick layout and select this option which says fx on top of it layout 9 um, it's going to give you your simple linear regression equation right away now over here the beta 0 y intercept that we just talked about is 63.595 and beta 1 which is the slope coefficient is given as 0 0.272 now, from the scatter plot, um, we were able to see that although there seems to be a slight upward trend between overall score and the comfort um, scores, but it does not appear to be t linear. And that we can check with the help of the R squared term. The R squared term is a good metric to assess how good of a fit your re linear regression equation is um, for this particular data set. Um, so we're going to talk about um, the values of R square and how to get this value in just a bit. But I just wanted you to see how the scatter plot is obtained in Excel and um, the quick way of running a li simple linear regression equation in Excel. Okay, so now let's come back to um, discussing what we mean by the R squared value. So the R squared value, which is also referred to as the coefficient of determination, is the ratio that evaluates the goodness of fit for the estimated regression equation. Because it's the ratio of the um, sum of the squared residuals divided by the sum of the squared total errors, it helps you understand how much of the changes in y are explained by the changes in x. So um, generally, uh, if, if a regression model is an excellent fit for that particular data set, you will see an R squared value, which is close to 100% or one if we're not um, calculating it in percentages um, but if the value is close to one let's say 80 percent or 90 percent or 70 75 percent even that is considered to be a good model in real life uh, there are very few times when you get such high r squared values a lot of the times um, when we get something above 50 percent uh, that is also considered to be a good uh, linear model because 50% or more of the changes in the y variable are being explained by the changes in the x variable. Now when we move from a simple linear regression model to a multiple linear regression model, um, the r squared value can be slightly deceiving because just because of the mathematical nature of the equation, when you add an additional variable to the model, so instead of having just one x variable, you have x1 and x2, the r squared value might just go up artificially. So in order to um, correct for that mistake, whenever we are conducting a multiple linear regression analysis, it is better to use the adjusted r squared value as your metric or goodness of fit because the adjusted r squared value um, adjusts the r squared for adding an additional variable to the model so for example if i have a regression model where i have two two um, x variables so beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 in this case I'm going to be looking at the adjusted R squared value and not the R squared value because the adjusted R squared value would be the correct metric to test for the goodness of fit of the model. Now, um, correlation is also a term that is 
uh, used a lot in reference to regression analysis. Uh, correlation is also a measure of linear relationship between two variables. So um, correlation, which is denoted by little r, um, can range between minus 1 and positive 1. When you have a correlation value of 0, it just refers to no linear relationship between x and y. Um, that's different from no relationship between x and y because correlation only measures linear relationship. When you have a negative correlation value, it means that x and y are negatively related. So you're probably going to see the scatter plot of y against x and the trend in the data values is going to be downward because when x increases y decreases when correlation is positive the trend is upwards because when x increases y also increases okay now let's go back to our example for the beachfront hotels and see if we can run a regression model for overall score against all three of these variables, comfort, amenities, and in-house dining. To do that, what I'm going to do is go to the data tab in my Excel and go all the way to the top right hand side where you see data analysis. And when I click on data analysis, um, it gives me all the analysis tools that are available with this particular add-in. And I'm going to select regression. Um, if you do not see this data analysis um, option in your Excels, that means you have not activated your um, data analysis add-in yet. So to do that, what you would have to do is Go back to file and once you click on file you can select options at the bottom and when you the options window opens up you select add-ins and just press go when you press go this window pops up and out of these available um, tool packs or add-ins we just need the analysis tool pack so you can check that and press ok that's when the analysis tool pack is going to show up under your data tab in the top right hand side. So let's go back to our analysis tool pack and select regression. When I select regression in the analysis tool pack, it asks me for the input y range. Over here, um, because I ran it earlier, you see that the input y range is selected as the variable where. Um, the y values are located in this case it's column b because i'm trying to find out the changes in overall score based on the changes in the other three scores and the input x range is selected as column c all the way till column e now in this case it is safe to select the column headers because um, there is an option here which lets Excel know that the first row of the selected data refers to the labels in the data. And I'm not going to go over all the other options over here because these are advanced regression analysis options to see how the residuals are scattered, to look at the residual scatter plots and normal probability plots for um, the residuals to check if they're distributed normally or not. For now, we're going to focus on the basic regression equation. So I'll press OK here. And in a separate worksheet, the output of the regression analysis is given to you. Now let's go over all of the numbers that are given as a part of the output of the regression analysis. So the first number that is given is the multiple r squared. This is the value of r squared that we had for the simple linear regression and the multiple r squared is the version of it with multiple x values in the equation. Now like I said earlier for a multiple linear regression model, 
the most useful metric to test for goodness of fit is the adjusted r square and our particular model says that the adjusted r square is 70 percent which means that 70 percent of the changes in y are explained by the changes in x1 x2 and x3 we had 20 observations this is also our sample size for this particular um, data set and down here is where you see the degrees of freedom that's what the df refers to the ss refers to the sum of the squared values and the ms refers to the mean squared values now um, we're not going to run uh, too deep into the numbers for um, all the values in the ANOVA table but you should know that the value which we are most interested in is this F value which refers to the hypothesized test value for this particular regression equation. We want to test with the help of hypothesis testing if um, this regression equation is statistically significant or not and like any other hypothesis test this refers to the p-value of this particular test statistic and in this case um, it's the same as any other hypothesis test that if your significance or p-value is extremely small it means that you reject the null hypothesis that um, the regression equation is not significant which means that if you do get a p-value which is really really small uh, you can safely assume that the regression equation is in fact statistically significant now bottom table over here down here refers to the coefficients value that we got for our regression equation so in this case beta 0 is equal to 35.7 approximately um, beta 1 given that comfort is our x1 variable is equal to 0 0.1 which means that if i keep all the other variables in the model constant and change comfort score by one unit the y variable the overall score changes by 0 0.1 unit uh, similarly you have beta 2 as 0 0.24 and beta 3 as 0 0.247 now what you see right in front of these refer to the hypothesized uh, test values for each of these individual coefficients to test um, if each of these individual coefficients are statistically significant or not this one over here at the top refers to the model as a whole and at the bottom table this one refers to the each individual coefficient tested on its own to be statistically significant or not now once we have uh, the output for our regression analysis we are in a position to write down our regression model for this particular data set and the regression model is that y is equal to 35.7 plus beta 1 which is 0 0.1 x1 plus 0 0.2 x2 plus 0 0.25 x3 this is your final regression model that we have um, analyzed with the help of excel's data analysis tool pack now once you have established this equation between y and all the x variables in your data set um, you can use this model to help you predict the values of y so if I want to find out what the overall score will be if the comfort score is equal to 80 and the amenity score is equal to 92 and 
the in-house dining score is equal to 95. In order to find the value of y when this happens, I can simply use my regression equation, which is equal to the intercept value plus the value for the comfort score multiplied by its respective slope coefficient plus the amenity score which we said was 92 multiplied by its slope coefficient and finally we add the in-house dining score which we said was 95 multiplied with its slope coefficient and that gives us an overall score of 90.2. So in this way, we can use the coefficients that we get as a result of the regression output to help us predict the value of the y variable. Now, if you want to compare this value to the actual overall score, when comforts, amenities, and in-house dining had scores of let's say 80, 92, and 95, let's say that this value is equal to 92, then our regression equation was able to predict a value which is close to the actual value with an error term equal to 1.57 for this particular data point.